Uh, I've gotten a number of comments already for my stylish apparel, and it only, it only required the mugging of one Fairway employee just after I <laughs> picked up the groceries. He loaded them up and bonked him on the head, and here I am. So, so welcome to uh, Grace Community Church. We're glad that you're here and you've chosen to spend your Christmas Eve afternoon uh, with us. We are going to, um, we're going to tie... Uh, a ribbon, so to speak, on our series, on the Advent series, Under the World. We've been looking at the prologue of the Gospel of John, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. No, I'm not going to preach that verse by verse. That's what we've been doing the last month, but just kind of a summary, and we'll get to that in a moment. But before we get to the, the scripture, I do want to have a little bit of fun with all of you. How many kids do we have here? So kids... I'm not going to qualify the age. If you're a kid, just uh, raise your hand and shout out. Okay, a lot of kids. Glad that you're here. Glad that you're here. A lot of times, kids find me frightening and, and, and scary and mean. I even had someone say recently, uh, this was about two or three weeks ago, this little guy, I was preaching and I was getting intense and she turned to her mother and about 50 people around the kid heard the kid say this, I just don't like that man. So... <laughs> I, I, hope that, I hope that I'm not scary. Uh, scary, I might be, no promises, but it's a goal not to be scary this, this afternoon. So, uh, but who doesn't like toys? Kids, are you excited for tomorrow morning? How many of you kids actually open up your presents on Christmas Eve? Cheaters, all of you. <laughs> no, that's what we used to do when I grew up as a kid. We always did our presents on Christmas Eve. Some families do that. Some do it in the morning. But everybody loves a new toy. Everyone loves a new toy. And so here at Grace, uh, we have a new toy, or I have a new toy, and that is uh, an ability to interact with you as, as, uh, as a congregation while I'm preaching that is different than raise your hand. I've always been doing that for years and years and years. So this way, this way you can actually interact. So if you pull out your cell phones, pull out your cell phones, you can actually interact with the sermon. So here's what we're going to do. It's survey time. So here's what you take out your, ser your, your, your sermon. Take out your cell phone. And in your text, you're going to text GRACE100. GRACE100 to the number. So in your two, you're going to type 22333. So that's the number that you're texting to. Now what you're going to text to that number is GRACE100. So put that in, the, in the, uh, the, the field, and then you're going to hit enter. Now, that will then bring you to a prompt, and you will be now ready to participate, ready to participate. So the first thing, first thing, so I'll give you a chance to get there. The first thing that we're going to do is we want to find out who's here. This is always a unique time for us at Grace because every Christmas Eve and every Easter, we see a ton of people that we don't normally see, but we don't know, are you, do, do you live here in the area, or are you visiting, are you family members from out of town, or, or and so we're kind of curious, we want to find out who actually is attending here at this Christmas Eve service, so how often do you attend Grace, so you're, you're going to have a one letter answer, all you have to do is type A, B, C, D, E, or F, so A, you're visiting or you don't live in the area. You're visiting the kids. You're visiting the grandparents. You're visiting your parents, but you don't live in the area. So you're, you're not in the, in the area. You're just here visiting family. Uh, B, I don't normally go to church. I'm following my girlfriend because I want to please her. You don't have to put that. Or, or I'm just curious and I'm checking this whole Christmas Eve thing out, but I'm not typically somebody who attends, attends church. Um, I go to church, you know, a couple times a year, one to five times per year, C, D, six to 11 times per year, E, I'm a little bit more consistent, once or twice a month, or I'm a zealot, I'm there three to five times a month. So those are your, those are your choices. So here's what we got. Guys can't make up your mind, can you? <laughs> just like, well, I don't want you to think that I never come. So just be honest. Be honest. So here's what we got. Uh, 
Well, it's still changing. You're still, you're still typing them in. It will collect data as long. And by the way, you can only enter once. If you try to enter a second time, it won't register. So, so that's, uh, that's, that's who we're speaking to. So most of you are, looks like you're regular attenders, at least over half. Uh, we have some uh, 10% or so visiting. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, normally don't go to church. Nominal. There's not too many of you. Um, the Creasters, you're making appearance. Good for you. Second time of the year. We'll see you again on Easter. Hopefully you'll come back. <laughs> Hopefully you'll come back. I hope you don't mind I'm having fun with you. I don't know who's piping those, so don't be offended. And if you are, we'll see you maybe never again. So, <laughs> so it's regardless of how many times you come to church or whether you're out of town or whether you're a normal Grace Community Church attender, thank you for, uh, for being here. We're glad that you have chosen to worship. There is a point to all this. This will help us plan for next year, knowing who's here and how to better minister to the people that are coming. So it's, it's not just for fun. Now, pertaining to where we're headed this morning, the next question. For the following question, you're going to text a one-word answer. Okay, this is not the question, by the way. This is not the question. So I don't care what your favorite ice cream is. Don't type it. But if that were a question, don't type, you know, I really like vanilla ice cream. Don't do that. Just type vanilla. Got it? So we're looking for one-word answers. Vanilla. So, okay, you ready? So that makes sense. One-word answers. Here's the question. The question is, what do you like most about Christmas? Your answers will pop up on the screen. And if more than one person types in, up. Oh, more than one person types in the same answer, that word will become larger than all the other words. So, music, the Lakers, really, <laughs> joy, sleep, food, Jesus, Jesus is running a close second to family, <laughs> that's super, it's a good thing you're here, we'll fix that in a little bit. <laughs> so... The bigger the word, the more the responses. So, so what do we have here? Jesus is starting to make a comeback. He's, will he over-pursue your family? We'll see. Maybe. Okay. Nope. Family is going to take it. Family is going to take it. Um, now, you see why? This is a new toy. You're like, I don't even want you to preach. Just, just watch the results. <laughs> okay, someone typed Christ. That could also be f Jesus too. Uh, so you get the idea. You get the idea. There's lots of people have different things that they love about Christmas. Obviously, family is going to make the top one or two. Uh, it's good that Jesus got a fairly strong showing, considering it's his birthday. Uh, but lights, Oreos, heck yes, Oreos, stories, um, tradition, lots of presents, you name it. There's all sorts of reasons that, that we just, uh, we love Christmas, and um, those are great things. Now, next question, next question. What's the best gift you've ever received? Try to do it in a one-word answer. Snow? What masochist type snow? <laughs> you have to be from Minnesota, obviously. Okay, at least Jesus is making a stronger showing this, uh, this particular one. <laughs> Whiskey. <laughs> nice. You know, there is a profanity filter on here. That one slipped through, although it's not profanity. PS4, GameCube. Salvation, baby, vacation, concert, family. Oh, engaged. Congratulations, whoever the engaged person here. College. Wow. That, well, I guess if it was a gift, your tuition was paid. That is a big deal. Barbie camper. All about Barbie campers. <laughs> you see, this is fun, isn't it? It's fun for me. I don't know if you're having fun, but I'm enjoying this. So, in 1974, in 1974, I was seven years old, seven years old, and I asked for and received the most awesome gift of my childhood, and that was 
Kung Fu Grip G.I. Joe. How many of you guys had a Kung Fu Grip G.I. Joe? Leave your hands up. Loud and proud, guys. Okay, about five or six of us. This wasn't a doll. It was an action figure, okay? It was an action figure. And he had, he had these, these, these hands that are like this. And do you remember the commercials, guys, that where they, they would do this and they would close up on the hands and you could see his hands doing this. And he just, he just, it was awesome. It was awesome. And I had this helicopter that went with it and all these different awesome missions and, and hours and hours. And you remember... The, the, the animated toy, uh, show Toy Story. You remember that, kids? Okay. I was Sid. So I was that kid that would take, I would take the G.I. Joe, and I, I remember uh, putting his kung fu grip things on the, on the bar of the, uh, the kite, and I would tie them on, and then I would fly the kite and then pretend like he was on a hang glider. And then there was a parachute that went with him. You see, throw him up as high as you can, and then sometimes it would open and sometimes it wouldn't. But it was just, it was awesome. It was awesome. But how long do those toys actually last before, before you get bored with it? Bored with it. So tomorrow when you open up those toys, kids, how long do you think you're going to love that favorite toy? How many of you say, I'll love it a whole one hour? Raise your hand. Whole one hour. How many of you think that you'll last, it'll last longer than a day? How about a week? A week. How many of you think that a year from now, you'll still be playing with that toy. How many of you think you're going to take that toy to college like Andy from Toy Story? <laughs> you're delusional. <laughs> It'll never make it there. That's the whole point of the Toy Story franchise. We get tired of our toys. We throw them in a box or they break. And that's just the way it is. One more question and then we'll get to the text here. One more question. 2020 would be a great year if I received military. Obviously, someone is going to war. So I, if I received one word, what would it be that would make this year great? Let's see. Peace is leading the way. Pasta. Someone has pasta. Love. New job. Joy. Health, someone tried to type in joy and happiness, cheater, I said one word, college scholarships, that's plural, but I get it, So as you're typing, as you're thinking about this, and you're, those of you that have already put your answer and you're, you're kind of observing, you're seeing what, what is the response here, we see that the number one, what's, what does everybody want? Peace. Now here's the thing. Everything else that you typed, that people typed, they're, you want those things so that you can get what? You're, that's the point. You think that if I could receive happiness, a new job, retirement, companionship, extensions, a million dollars, be a millionaire, money. Uh, no, there's another guy, whiskey, the one alcoholic here. He's, <laughs> he's convinced that if he just had another fifth, he would be at peace. You might be asleep, but you would not be at peace. So everybody wants peace. Everybody wants joy. Joy is the second one there. And you can kind of combine those together. Everybody wants peace wants those things. But here's, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's, let's go south here. Here's four reasons you're not going to have peace or joy in 2020. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to rain on the parade here. I'm going to steal the presents from under the tree. I'm going to make, I, I'm going to be very real here and I'm going to show you why, why those things that you want, the peace and the joy, and the other things that you ask for, hoping that those are going to give you peace and joy, why those things will not actually bring you lasting joy. Number one, you won't get what you desire. You won't get what you desire. There's a number of people that typed money, a million dollars, a new job, a relationship. There's a possibility that what you want and what you think is going to bring you joy, you just aren't going to get it. How many of you have prayed for physical healing for yourself or someone else in the last year and you got nothing? 
You don't always get what you want for. You want. It doesn't always happen that way. So the one thing you think that you need to be happy and to have joy, oftentimes that one thing doesn't come. You pray for financial deliverance, a new job. How many of you have asked for a new job and it didn't, didn't come? Okay, these are normal things. As human beings, we want and we long for different things, and then those things don't always come through. They don't always come through. And so we then attribute our lack of peace and or our lack of joy because we didn't get what we prayed for, or we didn't get what we worked for, or we didn't get what we've hoped for. And all the while, we still are convinced, if I only had it, then I would have joy. And then I would have peace. Here's another reason why we won't have lasting joy potentially. Second, you'll get it and then lose or ruin what you desired. How many of you thought that having a relationship with someone you loved would bring you lasting peace and joy and you ruined it in the last 20 years? Anybody? Three or four honest people. Well, good for you. There's a bunch of people who are like, I don't want people to know. But you know in your heart that, yes, you've contributed to the misery that you're in because of broken relationships. You lost it. You ruined it. Or someone else ruined it. Another reason, someone else will take away or ruin what you desire. So in this case, you're not necessarily at fault, but you've been a victim. You've been a victim of injustice. How many of people have suffered greatly in the last year, the last two to three, four years because of someone else's choices? And it's really painful. And it's really painful. So these are very real hurts. And then lastly, you just lose interest. You thought that the Kung Fu Grip G.I. Joe would bring you lasting peace and joy, but it turns out it's just like any other toy you ever had. You're enthralled with it on Christmas morning and for a few weeks afterwards, and then it just, you're just bored. And that could be that relationship with that person that you figured, this will bring my life meaning. That could be that new job. That could be any number of things believing that if I could just achieve this accomplishment or just reach this milestone, then that would bring my life meaning. And then once you cross that finish line and that gold medal is around your neck and you're like, I finally got that relationship. I finally got that promotion. I finally received the income that I think that I need to be happy. And then six months later, there's this feeling of emptiness and boredom and frustration. And now you're on to the next thing you think you have to have to bring you joy. Sound familiar? Sound familiar? Why is it, why is it that that tends to be our reality? Now, I am speaking mostly to people who would at least self-identify as followers of Jesus. But even those of you who identify as followers of Jesus will recognize that that tends to be true for people that are in the church as well, certainly, Uh, for people that are not. Why? What gives? The reason is that we were made to long for more than temporal gifts. You and I were created in the image of God to bear His image and have a personal relationship with the Creator of the universe and to find our purpose, to find our value, to find our dignity, and to find our meaning rooted in who we are in terms of our relationship with that creator. It's not temporal. And yet, that's not where we're looking for significance, by and large. Why? Well, the reason is we look to the gifts under the tree instead of looking to the giver of those gifts for joy. John chapter 1 Verses 9 through 11, John writes, The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. Catch this. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. Why? 
Jesus came 2,000 years ago. The Jewish people were eagerly awaiting a Messiah. They were praying for a Messiah. They were longing for a Messiah. And when the Messiah came to his own people, his own people reject him. Even though he is the light and he created everything in the world, the world did not recognize him. The world did not esteem him. The world did not worship him. Why is that? Why is that? One small three-letter word, sin. Now, when we think of that word sin, we tend to think of very bad or poor, poor moral choices. And it does include that, but you need to understand that sin is a disposition before it's ever an action. Sin is a disposition that's the essence of sin is essentially this, unbelief. Unbelief. Before Adam and Eve ever ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they first of all had to, had to cast doubt upon their creator. They began to distrust him. It's, it's essentially the essence of sin is this. It's to look at the giver of all gifts and to think intellectually to yourself, you can't make me happy and I have to make me happy. That's the essence. That's at a core level. Before you make a choice... That's the decision, that's, that's the mentality. It's to accuse God of not having your best interest at heart. It's to accuse God, you don't know what I need to be fulfilled. Therefore, I need to be the determiner for what will make me truly fulfilled in life. And consequently, we run after this and that and all the pretty little packages under the tree. And those are the things that we are pursuing that we believe we have to have in order to be joyful, in order to be joyful. And what's the result? What's the result? The author of Proverbs says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end leads to death. The result of going our own way. We all like sheep have gone astray, each to his own way. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, the scripture says. The result of this sin is death in a physical sense, of course, but also in a spiritual sense. We are spiritually dead to God. We have, he has no appeal to us. And that brings about all the negative consequences that you and I experience, the relational strife, the bitterness, the anger, the anxiety. How many of you are anxious over the Christmas season? How many of you are depressed? How many of you are lonely? How many of you are consumed with bitterness? You're angry. Where does that come from? It comes from a disposition that all of us are born with, and that all of us by choice and by nature exercise, and that's just sin. That's just sin. Here's, here's the hard and fast truth. Under your Christmas trees right now are a bunch of beautifully wrapped presents, unless Dad wrapped them, and then they're not that beautiful. They're just wrapped. But there's all these pretty packages and all this glittery paper and, and beautifully lit trees and, and everything is perfectly organized-ish perfectly. It's all the Christmas season, the gymnasium across the hall, all of these things. They're just, just they're, we just go all out for Christmas. And it's so not a representation of what's real in humanity. It's just all glitter and it's just all wrapping. It's all fake, and it all goes in the trash, and it all goes to the dumpster, and it doesn't make anybody happy in the long run. And then around the tree, get this, around the tree tonight, if you do the Christmas Eve thing, or in the, in the tomorrow morning, around the tree, you have temporal people looking to find lasting joy in temporal things. All of those people, your kids, are going to look for joy in the toys that they open. You are looking for lasting joy in the fact that your family's reunited. And here's the thing. Your family's going to leave. They're going to go home. And they're going to die. This is the second year in a row that I have to preach a loved one's funeral days after Christmas. If you are trying to find lasting joy in anything with flesh and blood, anything made of wood, stone, stubble, or hay, or gold, or silver, it will rob you. You can't 
keep it. But man, will we try. We will white knuckle Christmas. We will white knuckle those relationships. And then when your little teeny tiny children become teenagers and college students and they reject Jesus, or that spouse that you have longed for leaves you, or that job falls through, or that, that prayer for healing never comes through, you look to the skies and you'll say, Why, God? Why won't you give me joy? He never promised to give you joy through any of those things because all of those things can't last. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. The solution, though, is not in the boxes under the tree. The solution is found in the one who was nailed to the tree. But to all who did receive him, this is Jesus he's speaking of, to those who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory Glory as of this only Son from the Father, full of grace and full of truth. The giver of all these gifts, your health, your, your intellectual or physical abilities, the relationships you have, the financial prosperity that you're experiencing, the, the freedom that we have in this nation, all of the things that you currently enjoy, all of the things that you currently believe that those are the things which are going to bring you lasting joy, he is the giver of all gifts. But you will never have peace and you will never have joy until you seek a relationship with the giver of those gifts. And this scripture says, but to all who did receive him. So he came to his own, but his own did not receive him. But John says, but to those who did, to those who did receive, not, not stuff, but a relationship with the giver, he gave the right to become children of God. Who were not born of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but born of God. You see, verse 14, the word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God the Father sent God the Son so that God the Son might bear your sins and my sins on the cross. See, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter. Uh, 5 verse 21 says that he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God. Christ came to bear our sins. Christ came into a world that was broken and he himself was broken on our behalf. My wife pointed out this uh, devotional by Paul Tripp and it was yesterday's entry on the 23rd. He said that Christ... The Christmas story, we, we tend to think of it as so, so tame and so sweet and so beautiful, and, and it was anything but. The Christmas story starts with the Word becoming flesh and entering a world where Herod had all the children, all the males under two years of age, murdered in Bethlehem. So the Christmas story starts with a mass murder of little boys. And the Christmas story ends with the violent murder of the Son of God on the cross. See, here's the thing. This Christmas season, if you're broken and you feel the weight of your own sin and you feel the weight of the sin of the world and the injustice and the loneliness and the anxiety and the depression and the disease and the poor health, and if you feel all of that and you feel the brokenness, the brokenness of a fallen world, and your place in that world, know this, that the word of God became flesh 
and that that flesh entered the world so that he might be broken on your behalf so that you could be made whole. You can have your health taken from you. You can have your money taken from you. You can lose every single member of your family and you can lose your freedom, but you cannot lose your standing in the family of God. And knowing that, that's where lasting joy comes from. That's where peace comes from. It's being related to a God who loves you. Therefore, if there's anyone in Christ, there's no condemnation for anyone who has Christ as their Savior. So yes, have a great time tonight and tomorrow morning ripping open those presents. Celebrate with your family. I'm not the guy with the whiskey. You do what you want, but <laughs> just drive responsibly. Have a great time, but understand that come December 26th and you got all that trash in the driveway from all that paper, that's a reminder that everything that you cherish now will eventually be lost except Jesus and the one who died for you. So this Christmas season, first make sure you've received Jesus. Respond to the offer of grace. The Apostle Paul says, Do not receive the grace of God in vain, for now is the day of salvation. John says, To all who received him, to those who believed in his name. So whether or not you were a visitor or you're here once or twice a year, if you come every single Sunday, understand this, that the way to become right with God is not by doing good things. It's by allowing Christ to do the one good thing you could never do, and that's to bear your sin upon the cross. The Bible says that we are saved by grace through faith. And this is not of our own doing. It's the gift of God. Jesus Christ is that gift. Receive him as your Savior today. As you leave, uh, please take a gospel of John as a gift for yourself and also someone else. You'll see that there's tables actually out as you exit the building. There will be tables out there. and You can take one or a few of those for someone else. The Gospel of John is one of my favorite books of the Bible. It articulates the story of the Christ and what he has done. So please, if you're not familiar with that, please take one of those and be familiar with that. Also, if you are new here, please stop at the information desk. It's the first thing that you see as you enter the building, and there is a gift there for you. Uh, please take that as, as our gift. And also, the fellowship across the hall in the gym, please go there, check it out. Um, I'm keeping the service under an hour. Praise God, miracle. They do happen, right? Usually I preach for uh, at least 45 minutes. This is a shorter message, so we've given you time. Please hang out, uh, enjoy fellowship, get to know one another, and have a Merry Christmas. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the grace and the salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that uh, he is the reason for this Christmas season. But Lord, truth be told, we forget that. Uh, in the hustle and bustle of Christmas trees and presents and family and food, all good things. Lord, help us to not lose sight of the best thing, which is you, the giver of all good gifts, and the best gift of all, which is the, the, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray that he would be honored tonight uh, as we worship and also tomorrow as we celebrate his, his birthday. Thank you, Lord, that uh, Christmas is the beginning of the coming of the kingdom of God, and we, we look forward to your coming and consummation at the end of all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry Christmas. Go in grace. We'll see you next week.